five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five. I think we're ready. Are we ready? I don't know. Testing, testing, one, two, one, two. Hello and welcome to another episode of Game Hammer Live. This is the show where we, of course, do an awful lot of interesting stuff. And today, the interesting stuff we're doing is we're coding a new festive game. Now, I, I believe it was Sir Patrick Furlong who asked uh, whether we were doing a festive game this year. And I hadn't actually planned one. And then I thought, why, why shouldn't we do one? <laughs> why shouldn't we do one? <laughs> yes. Beavers and Butthead have been in the house. I'm just writing a line on my paper so I can work stuff out. So I thought, why aren't we doing one? Let's do a festive game. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And I'm going to write it in basic. It could get ported to other systems if anyone fancies doing that. But the main idea is that we're going to create the basic structure of a an adventure game. And we're going to see how we get on from there. Now, I was considering a... An adventure game where like uh, like Legend of Zelda it's top down and we walk around and we do things but then I thought why don't we just do a text adventure in the standard uh, old very old school style you know you are in a room x y and z very short descriptions very few ideas and then puzzles all over the place I thought we'd do that so let's see who's in the chat Captain Captain T Dowd is in the chat he says I like the title page Zoe's hijacked Santa's sleigh a la Grand Theft Auto has she no shame no, 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 I don't. For those of you who didn't see it, it was cool. <laughs> oh, I do like these sort of things. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Game Hammer. Let's have a look. Let's bring it up. Where's my art assets for Game Hammer? Thumbnails. Here we go. I'm going to bring this up on the screen. Oh, yes. So those of you who didn't see it, live game coding. I'm sat in a sleigh. <laughs> I'll say I'm. This is this is Gamer Girl. She doesn't actually have a, a name officially in the in the official Game Hammer canon. She's just sort of there, and she's got this coding sleigh. There's a tux. The, oh, my goodness, there's a tux. There isn't a tux. It's. I was about to say something really really funny about the people who think it's tux, and then I just said there's a tux. That's just wonderful. There's a penguin that some people keep telling me is tux, but he's not. He's Gerald. I've decided his name is Gerald. And it's Gerald the Penguin. He hasn't got his uh, headphones today because I forgot to draw them. I drew this about an hour ago, which is why the face doesn't look quite right on this. <laughs> but this is Gamer Girl and Gerald, and they're coding in a sled that is rocket powered. Yes, that's why there's uh, lots of fire behind them and some rockets. It's a rocket powered coding sled, and that's how we roll here. <laughs> I just like the idea of that. <laughs> oh, what do we like? So, so who else have we got in the chat? Well, we have, of course, Sir Patrick Furlong and Melody the Cat. Meow, meow, meow. Yes, hello to both. And Dave Holloway, hello there. Oh, excuse me. And Hillside Junction, who says, Good evening, Zoe, and Game Hammer River is. Hmm. Patrick says we should call her Lady Game Hammer of Dunhelm, or however you pronounce it. Yes, Dunhelm. <laughs> we don't pronounce the, the H in, in Dunhelm. <laughs> yes, Lady Game Hammer of Brown Hat, which is what Dunhelm actually uh, means. It could be like uh, uh, the Brown uh, Mountain or the Brown Hill or the Brown Hat. So, yeah, it's probably Brown Hill. I'm thinking about it. It would be like a, a big mound. Hmm. But I like the idea of like Lady Game Hammer of Brown Hat. <laughs> so I've got an idea, and we're going to try and do this. Let's uh, let's go for the standard style of um, well, essentially just a standard traditional style text adventure. So you might see something on the screen at the moment. Well, of course you see something on the screen at the moment. It's just wait, welcome to Game Hammer, and it bounces around the screen. I did this. In very small amounts of code, it was actually quite surprising how easy it was to do this. So, break in 30. We are using an emulator today. Brown Hatter won't do. It wouldn't do, I'm afraid. <laughs> so, yeah, for x equals 1 to 38, which uh, which 
uh, basically becomes the number of spaces that come after it. So x equals 1 to 38, add x amount of spaces, and then add on the end of that, welcome to Game Hammer. Then print it. Only print the first 39 of it so that it doesn't end up with a carriage return. So print it. And then start counting backwards and do the same thing. And so it ends up with boing, 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 boing across the screen. That's all that was. I thought that was pretty good. So let's do this. We're going to start by um, machine uh, disk. Let's have a look at the disk system. Uh, remove that one. Eject. Create a new disk. Ooh. HFE or extended. The standard disk. 40 tracks, one side. CPC data and type of disk. Wow, that was a lot. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was a lot of uh, questions just to make a freaking disk. But it's interesting that I can do HFE now. So, right, let's put it onto the desktop and it's going to be um, Xmas Game Hammer Game 2023. Save that onto there. What's going on there? That was a bit weird. Reset that. Is the disk still in? Yes, the Xbox. Okay, I don't know what's going on here, but that's a bit worrying. <coughs> okay. Do -do 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 -do. Melody gets a post op checkup tomorrow afternoon. Excellent. Let's hope that she's fine. So, the first thing we need to work out is uh, how our data would go. So, let's say we've got. Um, data of uh, like um, a room number, a weight, and a description. That's all we would really need for um, like, um, let's say an item, isn't it? That's all we'd need for an item. Room, weight, description. Now, we would also na need its name. Name, the room it's in, its weight and its description. But we'd also need, uh, let's say, a, a noun. So we've got, like, let's say we've got dagger, a fine dagger. It's in room seven. It weighs 12. And its description is, this is a very fine dagger, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, she's a usual. She's a usual self, just wanting more TLC than usual. So that's what we'd need for a um, for a thingamajig, a an object in the game. Let's say we would also need data of um, room number uh, description and its exits: north, south, east, west. Up, down. Hi, Tim. How are you doing? So, let's say we've got the room number five. Its description is giant pit. And then it has exits, north, south, east, west, up, down. And it would be... Uh, if it was zero, then it doesn't have an exit in that direction. If it does, that's the room number that you go to. That seems pretty good. Would we need anything else for that? Um, oh. We could actually add in light description, dark description. Because we could have, or is that going too deep? Let's put it in as an option. Let's put that in as an option because I have a feeling that that could be very useful. And yeah. Okay. And is it naturally light or dark? And then we have options, because, for example, if a place is naturally light, you will always see the light description. If it's potentially dark, then you would have to bring a light of your own. Oh, I like that as an option. So we've got that. So we'll also need some variables. We need to know the room that we're in. Let's call it that our location number. 
We'd also need um, our our weight limit. I choose your own adventure. Doesn't use data statements. All uses print and in keys, in key string. Yes, I, I've done that in the past, but I'm I'm trying to build this as a way of um, essentially um, giving the option of changing the game, so we can have a game. Thank you, Iron Horse. How are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to do this as this is basically the core. You do know that you're not putting like I'm. A, I'm working on this in my head and putting it out on screen so you can all see what I'm talking about before I start writing notes. So we're going to need a weight limit. We're going to need our location. What happened to the fun little JRPG we're making? We're going to come back to that after we've made a Christmas game. So we're having a quick break from that, then we're coming back to it because we want to make a game for Christmas. So do we need anything else? We've got our location, we've got our weight limit. So I have an idea that we've got some very interesting stuff here. So how, how many nouns and how many rums are we going to make? Planning on making mine part of an engine. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to do as well. So if we get a, uh, a, a thing together where it's basically the game core engine, we could put any kind of data in, tell the uh, game code to load that data after it's loaded the core engine, and then we're playing the game. But we could have a different one at a different time. That's what I want to do. So let's do this. Let's have, so, for um, objects. We have noun, name, room, weight, Description. I'm writing this down now. And then rooms. Number. Light. Description. Dark description. So it gives us a lot of interesting... We could have put a Christmas level in the RPG. We could have, but we haven't. <laughs> North, south, east, west, up, down is lit. Okay, and now we need variables. Uh, right. We're going to need nouns and then in brackets we've got a thing names noun string name string room percentage uh, these are arrays actually weight percentage description String, right. Okay. Actually, I'm going to change room percentage to position to pause percentage. So for position, so we're also going to need. Um, now we're going to have room percentage, which is the location of the room. L desk. And that's a string. D desk. It's a string. They're the descriptions. And then uh, exit N, exit S, exit E, exit W, exit U, exit D. And is lit. And that they're all arrays. For our character, we need to know their location. So that's going to be co just called lock. And that's going to be a percentage. We're also going to need uh, a weight limit. W limit. It's a percentage. We're also going to need to know their health. I think we should need we should know their health. Because that can add in an interesting thing. And score. Okay. 
Okay, that's what we need. So let's set these up. Now, I'm going to bring up on our screen the Amstrad manual so that we can all see it. Because I think that will help with our coding, if we can all see what's going on. So, Amstrad CPC manual. And then we can all see it. Where's the user manual? Amstrad CPC. Da -da -da -da. CPC wiki, always a good one for this. So, do we have the... Da -da 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 -da. Please tell me they've actually got a copy of the data thread. CPC 464 user manual. Here we go. Oh, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Why is it a raw file? What, what the hell's wrong with a standard just PDF? Ah, CPC 464 English dot PDF. Here we go. Right. What I'm looking for now. Have you got a physical CPC manual? I've got three. <laughs> I've got I've had three Amstrads over the years. <laughs> Hello, Neutrino Fire, how you doing? So I'm gonna now look for the the way that arrays are set up. Begins with array. Oh please tell me you can search inside this. Variable operators and data, here we go. Right. Bearing in mind the need to dimension arrays. So let's do this. Show me Seriously? Dim. Okay, where is it? Where Where is it in this? Okay, dim. CX5. You've got given a CPC664. Nice. Here we go. Right. Here we go. So. Dimension. Here we are. Du -du 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 -du. A 664 is like the best. It's, uh, well, I say the best. The, the, technically, the 6128 Plus is the best because it's got the enhanced stuff as well as extra memory. But the CPC664 is the best because it's so pretty. I just love the CPC664. So, yeah, nice. Absolutely lovely that you've got one. That's fantastic. So, what we're doing here, there's an array. We, we, need, a, we need arrays because we need to, to be able to hold more than one piece of information. However, we can't tell how many locations we're going to have, so I'm going to put in 20 for each of them, just because. And then we can change that later if we need to. So, dim is how we define it for dimensions in the array. Let's begin our coding. List. We have nothing. 10. Rem. This is a remark. This is never going to be seen in the actual finished product. Where's... There it is. Um... Game Hammer Xmas Game 2023. Came with a RAM expansion. Oh, lovely. Oh, you've got a brilliant one there. 20 RAM. Coded live on YouTube. 30 RAM. By Zoe Kirk Robinson. Apparently I cannot spell my own name. Here we go. Right. 40. So we're going to start defining things now. Dimension. Noun. Dollar. Because it's a string. We're going to have 20. We can do as many of these as we like. Noun. Name. String. 20. Position. We're going to have percentage because this is a number. And the reason I'm putting string and percentage is not because it's required in Amstrad Basic. You don't require them. But if I put a dollar, that's the universal marker that this is a string. And if I put percentage, it's a universal marker that it's a number, which helps me to remember what each thing is while we're coding. So again, we're going to put 20. Position. Weight. Percentage. 20. Again, we're putting 20. We don't know how many we're going to need. But here we are. Description. Dollar, spa, uh, string 20. Uh, right. Room. Percentage. That's the room number. I'm, technically, I'm not sure we need that. We could take it out if we end up running out of space later. But we'll keep it for the moment. Right. Light description. String 20. Dark description. String 20. 
Now, the exits thing is actually, would I trade Jenny for a 664? No, Jenny is worth far more than a 664. She might even be worth two 664s. <laughs> Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> so I've got the exits thing here. I wonder if we could make an array of like, I bet we could actually. Let's let's do a. You can do a massive array, and I think you can do double arrays like this. Here we've got dim, dim five eighty one five eighty one, but I'm not going to do that just to keep this simple. So let's see. Um, exit north twenty. Exit south twenty. Exit east. 20 exit west 20 50 Dim dimension the rest of them exit up percent 20 exit down percent 20 is lit to decide whether it's uh, whether it's uh, a lit uh, naturally thing and then for the player we have location which is just a string so we don't need to define that so there we are and then 60 is the final thing so i'm going to put in 45 uh, rem define key variables and then 60 and uh, let's have um Okay, location percentage equals one because that's how, where we start. Weight limit percent equals 15. We can change these again later. Health percentage equals 100 and score percentage equals zero. I use it in inky string in my game as you only need to press one or two or three depending on the page yeah i've done that before in uh, choose your own adventure i it's a great idea but what we're doing here is a, a standard text adventure so we're going to do it a little bit differently so we now know our location the weight limit and all of that so now we've got that 100 remark game loop Let's do this. 200 remark. Actually, 100 mark set up screen. 110. CLS mode 1. We actually don't need both of those. Mode 1. Uh, never seen basic done like this before. That's why we do this. That's the, we give people interesting ideas. This is uh, Amstrad CPC's Locomotive Basic. It is the best, most comprehensive basic that was done on an 8-bit system back in the day. There are better basics from the PC era, but for the old home computers of the 80s, this is the best one in my view. Right. Border 0. Ink 1. What are the ink colours on the Amstrad CPC again? Let's have a look at the end. Where's my list of colours? Where's my list of colours? I know there is one because it's there in this thing. Here it is. Okay. Here's our colours. So, the first one we want, ink. BBC Basic was the base, best eight bit. This is saying, no way bit was BBC Basic better than Locomotive Basic. It was so good. Ink zero zero. Ink one. Actually, you can't have an ink zero, can you? I've just forgotten. Ink one is uh, zero. Ink two is. Let's have a nice um, pastel yellow twenty five. Ink 1 is 25, sorry, 2 is 25, ink 3 is, let's have red, bright red, 6, ink 4, 
But you couldn't just copy and paste the text from the PDF. That would be nice, yes. I think four is. Let's have purple. No, because that would be too close to everything else. So let's have sky blue, 11. <laughs> okay, then. I think you'd have zero for the paper, yeah. Ink, one, 25, pen, one. List, there we are. So, now we've got the screens. Edit 110. Right, set up everything. So, paper, zero, pen, two, CLS. Run. Right, we've got a, an error here. What's our error? Ah, we can't have pos because that's a basic code. So we have posin, position. There we go. We can't have zero for the paper because it didn't work. Interesting. Edit 110. Will you be streaming over Christmas? I will, but uh, it will be... There we go. There we go. It will be different. Let's put it that way. We're, I haven't quite decided how it's going to work. Um, it's probably... I'm going to do a Christmas Day one. Ink Zero does change the background colour. So what can I... Interesting. Edit... 110. I have a feeling that I've got... Yeah, you can't have an ink 4, can you? There we are. Right. Paper 0. Paper 4. There we are. You can have, a, you can have an ink 4. Interesting. Who knows what's going on now? Run. So now we've got our thing. We're, so we've got to set up our window locations, and that's what uh, I'm about to do now. So we're not going. We're going to have windows. Windows aren't the same on uh, an Amstrad as they would be in other places. Do we need windows? We actually don't. So let's not bother. Okay, that's the setup screen. Hundred and twenty. Remark, this is game loop. Now we're going to set up how we do all of the things we're going to be dealing with. So 130, let's say. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. If. If him. If. A string equals right. <laughs> B string equals. Oh, how do you split? How do you split in? Oh, I've got to split this thing into uh, spaces. <laughs> There's a way to split a very a, a string by spaces, and I can't remember what it is. Let me just work this out. I've got to look in the, the code to find it out. So I'm just going scrolling right the way back to where all of our information is. So here we are. Right, here's all the commands that we can do. And go back and right to the top. No, nope, that's all. And we get to O. I'm trying to split based on, um, yeah, on, come on. Uh, what I want is to take the uh, input of a player and split it into various pieces. So let's say we have get hat. Ding ding. Get hat. I wanted to split in the input into get and hat. And I know you can do that. Do -do 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 -do. ABS uh, turns the absolute value of the given expression. No, that's what I want. Numeric value of the first character of a string. No. Calculation of the arctangent. No, we're not doing that. 
generate line numbers automatically. I need to do vids, but I haven't got the energy at the moment, says Neutrino. Yeah, I know the feeling. Uh, bins, feeling that's binary. Change the border with border call. No, cat, we don't need that. Chain merge. Chain loads a program from cassette into the memory, replacing the existing program. Chain merge merges a program from cassette into the current program memory. That's really cool. Okay, just think C int. Converts the given value to a rounded integer. That's nice. Clear, no, clear graphics, close in, close out. That's not what we want. Con con continue program execution after a break, stop, or end, as long as the program has not been altered. Nice. Uh, cosine, no, we don't need that. C real, converts the value to a real number. No, data, that's what we've been uh, setting up with the other stuff. Define, define function, no. Define interpret, define string. To Oh, there's the t degrees. Delete something now. DI, what's that? Disable interrupts. Huh. Didn't know you could do that. That's I've learned something today. Right, here we are. <laughs> Enter five names. Dimension, uh, define, or uh, dimensioning uh, this uh, variable. For uh, n equals 1 to 5, input name, please. Then you input it into that particular one in the the array next. And then print. How pr wise of you, that one, to buy a CPC464. I just like that. They've got a little, um, yeah, well done on buying this in the actual manual for the, pr for the computer. Draw, draw, R, no. That's, that's generating sounds. Sound envelope. We've got to have this, otherwise it doesn't work. And a file. No, I don't want to raise uh, ERL. What's that? These variables used in error handling. That's not what we want. Every. Oh right, the CPC clock. Yeah. X. No fix. No. Okay. So fix removes part of the numeric expression to the right of the decimal point. It leaves an interest. That's quite cool. I didn't know about that either. I should have known. Which memory? Oh. Talking about spec, you got the ZX next coming soon. Nice. Go sub, go to. No, none of these. Hex is converts numbers to hexadecimal form. High memory. No, we don't need that. Ink, in key, in key string. There's different ones. Oh, yeah, that's for the. That's for getting the string value, and that's for getting the uh, particular thing. Oh my goodness! Inky for the int. Right, yes, it's scanning the int, the uh, pressing of the buttons, so you can have diagonals. You can actually do diagonals in BASIC. For example, if you're pressing up and right or up and left, you can, then it can actually work that using the inky thing. That is cool. That is actually pretty damn cool. Input from a from an I/O port. Then you have your other version of input. Right here we are. Search is the first string expression for the first occurrence of the second string. Right. Where the optional number at the start indicates where to start the search. Otherwise, the search begins at the first character, the first string. So, let's have a look. Print. Right, here we are. Insta. In string. That's what we want. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's try that. Let's save this as first as Xmas. Just save it. So catalog, has it saved? Yes. So let's say we've got um, a string equals Captain Bombface. Print Insta and let's say 
a string space. In string, a string. Well, let's just say one. A no, let's see. Zero, a string. Improper argument. Okay, print. I've clearly I've got that right. One, a string. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. So now we know what what number it is. So the insta gives us the number that we need to start at. So here we go. So list. 130. N percentage equals insta one comma I string space A string equals left string I string Left string and right string, that's what we want next. Left. Where's left? Yeah, left string. String expression, integer expression. Let's say A string equals Amstrad. B string equals left string, A string 3. Print B string gives us the first three things from A string. AMS. So, that's what we want here. A string. Yes. I string. N percentage minus one. B string equals right string. I string N plus one. So what I've done there is when the player inputs their command, we get a certain thing. One, two, five, print. No, I don't want print. I want input, don't I? Where is it? Input. H I. Here we've got input. Input. Give me two numbers separate, blah, 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 blah. Then that. So what we want is this. Coding in a Santa. Hi, James. How are you doing? Input. What now? Question mark. Comma. I string. That is the player input. Then we take that player. In, let's list this again so we get to see it in the correct way. We've asked the player what now, and that's coming up on line one hundred and twenty-five. What now? And whatever the the player adds goes into I string. So we have then used n percentage equals insta which is in string search from point from character one of I string. We're searching within there from character one for the first space. So we now know what that space is. A string equals leftmost uh, part of that of I string up to the number or in the string before that space. And then B string is the right hand side after that space. That's all we're doing there. So we split it. Like we can have two inputs get hat, drop feet, that kind of thing. Why you would be carrying feet, I don't know. What platform is this? This is the Amstrad CPC, but this would work on any uh, basic that runs on the same command structure, which is most of them. So we've now got a split in the string and we can see what everything is. We've got the leftmost and the rightmost. So what we're going to be doing first is. Writing a text adventure engine, yes. We're start writing an adventure engine. The idea is that we will be able to use this for various things. We now have our split. That's what we want. So we're going to be looking mainly at a string in the game loop until we jump out to various other things. So let's do this. 140. If... Edit 130. 
a string equals I think it's upper that I need there. Yeah, it's no tea and cake, <laughs> but it'll work. And we're basically making the engine for a fancy Santa game. Where is you? You, 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 you? Upper string converts the entire thing into uppercase. That's what we want, upper string. A string equals upper string of the leftmost version. Why am I doing this? So that I don't have to code for ch any changes. Upper string. Let's say the, the player writes part of it in uppercase and part of it in lowercase. For example, they uh, they do uppercase from the first uh, on the first letter and then the rest is lowercase. Nothing like that. We don't need any. We need we don't need to work on any of that now. So it's all in uppercase, and that's what we want. So 140. If a string equals north, or a string equals n. Go to, let's say, let's say 300. I don't know whether it will be. Does it feature the Grim Reaper? Do we have to rescue Santa from drunken reindeer? What we're actually going to do is Santa has been at his annual Christmas party. And now he has to find his way home, locate his naughty list and check it twice. <laughs> and then ready his sleigh to go to work. <laughs> 140. 141. If a string equals south or a string equals s, go to 350. If a string... Who else was at the Christmas party? The Easter Bunny, Jack Frost, <laughs> uh, Mariah Carey, <laughs> just because... And probably a load of other people. Odin probably turned up at one point. <laughs> East or... Whoa, that's shorter. A string equals E. Go to 400. 143. If A string equals West or A string equals W, go to 450. 144. If A string equals up or a string equals u go to 500 145 if a string equals down or a string equals d go to 550 150 we're, we're now going to need something else that's all our movement ones north south east west up down if a string equals ventory or a string equals i go to 600 and this one is going to be easy so we're actually going to do it now uh, rem inventory 620 right c string equals you are carrying hi andy how you doing you are carrying actually we don't need a, a string just print what's the maximum number of lines in this system i i genuinely do not know <laughs> funnily enough i genuinely don't know you are carrying 620 for x equals 1 to let's say 30 it's probably not going to get that far for x equals 1 to 30 if and this is where we got our positions variables for position if position percentage x equals minus one minus one is our inventory inventory so if the position equals minus one 
games were compact in the old days. Yeah, they really were. Most I've seen is 3,000 lines of basic. I don't think most people wanted to code for huge amounts in basic. It's just one of those things. Position x equals 1. Print. Name string. X. Next X. 630, go to uh, 120. That was the start of the game loop. Basics not manageable for large code bases, I suspect. Probably not, yeah. Run 600. You are carrying syntax error. Oh! If position X equals minus 1, then print name string X next X. See if that works. Run 600. Should be enough there. You are carrying nothing. There you go. <laughs> Run line number is intriguing. Built in unit testing. Yes, it's one of the amazing parts of Locomotive Basic on the Amstrad CPC. It actually allows you to run from any point in basic code. I can run from any line number I've typed in. It will give me an error message if I run one I haven't typed in. Like, watch this. Run 700. We don't have a 700. Line does not exist. But if I type in run from 20, yeah, that's going to work. Because we've already got that. It's great. So good. List. So, we've now got the uh, thing. There we are. So, variables are auto-initializing. No, we've had to define them. We've had... Actually, no, yeah, variables are auto-initializing, but um, arrays of variables aren't. You have to define the size of an array, which we've done. We've got a load of arrays set up at 20 options per thing. Okay, um, right. Edit 620. At the moment, we've got one thing that I don't want it to do. If position x equals minus 1, then print name x, and then um, d percent equals 1. Next x. 630. If d percent equals... Didn't know you can run a single lines of code. Yeah. If d percentage equals 0, then print nothing 640 go to 120 run from 600 you are carrying nothing there you go so there we are we now have a check calling a pointer that's not been uninitialized results in access violations in modern operating systems that is true yeah it, it's a it's a oddity of uh, old basic, but you should really be defining everything. But in basic on Amstrad, you don't have to see that. Right? What now? Question. Question. We've got an issue there. I don't want that. I don't want two uh, question marks. So let's go and have a look at how the input command actually works back in Amstrad Basic using the manual, so that we can see it. I'm scrolling very fast. Sorry about this because it'll be a blur on your screen. Here we are. Okay. Give it two numbers separated by a comma. Uh, did, 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 did. Can we change this? Right. A semicolon after input suppresses the carriage return tagged at the end of the line being entered. A semicolon after quoted string causes a question mark to be displayed. A comma suppresses the question mark. So, we should... So we should do this. We should change it in the input command. Where is it? Uh, list. And then that's got list. I need to see uh, where it is. Right. 120. Edit 125. Edit input what now? Comma is. Run. What now? There we are. So now we only get one question mark and it'll still run. 
Instead of using the semicolon, we've used a comma, and it suppresses the question mark. So we've got the question mark in the correct place. Boom. Improper argument in 130. Edit 130. What have we got? Huh. Okay, we typed something in, and then it didn't... Ah! Right, we can't do what we just did. 130. N% equals insta 1 I string all of that. Actually, we don't need to change any of that. Edit. Edit 130. So, what we've got here is the thing. We didn't put a space in. I never even thought of that. We can't do what we just did on a t-shirt. I love it! Yes! <laughs> We've got a qu an issue here. I typed in a command that doesn't have a space. But we're checking for a space. And since we didn't have one, then n% percent is starting at 0 and remaining at 0. Which means all the commands that we're running to split strings based on spaces won't work. So we need to add in an if check here. If n% percent equals 0, then n% percent equals 1. That should work now. You are carrying nothing. There we go. So it's not going to actually work like that in the final game. There we are. Everything goes to the inventory. There we go. And that's all we needed <laughs> to make that work. So let's go back to this. So uh, we're starting at 300. So let's say, let's say 250. Print. Sorry, I don't know how to. One second. Uh, apostrophe. Where's the apostrophe? There it is. Da -da 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 -da. Plus. Um, what was it? I string. Plus. And then apostrophe, go to 120, run. Bum. Sorry, I don't know how to bum. <laughs> there we go. Um, boogie. Sorry, I don't know how to boogie. Get down and party. Sorry, I don't know how to get down and party. There we go. We will now, every time we have a, an issue where a command that is typed in that we don't recognise, it will tell us that it doesn't know how to. Try typing a noun. Inventory. Sorry, I don't know how... how don't, I don't know how to inventory, but I typed that in. Okay, we've got a problem. Right, let's do this again. And right. Edit 130. We've got a problem. Right. What I thought was a quick fix doesn't work. If n equals naught, then a string equals i string. go to 140 that will work that should work if n equals not then a string equals i string run inventory improper argument 130 edit 130 Why shouldn't that work? But we just did that. This is annoying. Uh, 
we have a we have an issue and it's specifically with <laughs> Okay, let's do this differently. One, three, five. Let's copy all of this bit. How do we copy? What's the copy key in this? Uh, right, I need to know this. Um, retro virtual machine to co Amstrad copy key. Because I don't remember it. I think it's like a na an alt or something like that. The copy key is ra map to right alt. Don't allow location. It's map to right alt key. That's good. So we're going to uh, copy all of this into 135. Edit 100. Now 130 is going to be that. And then n% percent equals naught. Then go to 140. Else go to. 135. Run. Boom. Sorry, I don't know how to boom. Inventory. Sorry, I don't know how to inventory. <laughs> I. How do I? This is a bit annoying because it should have worked. I don't know why this hasn't. Okay, list. 120 to 250. I just want to see that bit. That's another thing that I love with uh, this CLS list 120 to 250. I only want to see a certain part of the code we've done. There we go. Right. Does it need to be capital letter? That's the thing, Patrick. It shouldn't because I've asked for the whole thing to be an uppercase. Yeah, that's such a great part of Amstrad Basic. I can just clear the screen and list a part of the thing. So I only have on screen what I want to see. Right. If I type in a string equals upper string, boom. Watch this. I type that in. Print a string. I am typing in lowercase. Some of these early languages were actually somewhat sophisticated, especially in string handling, which is actually hard in C. Yeah, C is difficult. I am typing in lowercase, Patrick, but I've converted in line 135 into uppercase using the upper string command. So it should have worked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit 140. Print i string print a string print b string i want to see what this thing is doing run what now boom boom space space it's not copying it it's not there there we go that's why it's not doing it it hasn't seen it what now boom 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 mm. now that is interesting because it's done it. Whatever we type in, if it's a single thing and it can't find a number, then that's what's coming out. It's missing out the whole bit that we needed. CLS list 122, 250. I want to see that bit again. So, if n% percent equals... No. If n percent equals not so what line 130 is challenging yes it is but we're gonna get there edit 130 print n percent run i want to see what it's doing boom zero boom boom four it's the fourth one so it's doing it correctly <laughs> this is so annoying. <laughs> this is really, really annoying. <laughs> the 
charity shop still selling that SNES Mini for 50 quid. Oh, that is tempting. Don't tempt me, man. Don't tempt me. Right, let's have a look. Uh, I need to look at mid. The number is the number of the first space. Yes. It should work. Okay, let's have a look. Mid specifies part of a string, a substring, which can be used either as a destination of an assignment or as an argument. It's like an integer expression. For single. Yeah. Presumably you want is something that adds one to the size of the string for single words. Well, what I'm really wanting is something that just doesn't sh Okay. A string is Amstrad. Print mid from two. That's actually what we want. Oh, we don't want right. We want mid. Okay. See how that's list 120 to 250. Uh, right. Edit 135. B string, it was upper. It's not right we want. It's mid. Mid string from N. Run. Boom. Num. Boom. <laughs> Edit 135. What's wrong now? What's wrong with that? Okay, do I need to know the length of the string to do this? Len? Where's Len? String is print length. Yes, I do. Okay. It's hard to debug with that. Yes, it is. Len, do I need to? Nope, I don't. Okay. Length of um, I string. Where's Len? With cow. <laughs> Run. Right. Numb. Bum. Zero. Bum. Num. Num. Bun. Bun. 135. Edit 135. What's wrong now? Well, I got it wrong way around. I better have. I've, not, I've got them the wrong, wrong, wrong way around. Where's mid? 2, 4. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with this? I don't... If omitted, it extends the end of the original string. So what's wrong with that when I want to print the certain thing? So I don't actually need to know the length of the string because I can omit that and it's fine. N percent. That's all I needed, N percent. Because it was wrong. Uh, num, num. There we are. We've almost got it. Edit 135. N percent plus one. Run. Num, num. There we are. Right. Okay, that's fine. We've got that working. So, inventory. Zero. Inventory. And it hasn't changed the variables. It's not even touching the variables. It's jumping straight to the correct thing and then not doing it. So why isn't it doing it? So what we can see here is because we've got num num still there from there where we set them, it means that when I typed in inventory, all of the part about processing the left and right of the string was skipped. Which means it did know that that was equal to zero and then it jumped straight into checking all of the other stuff. So what is wrong here? So, I'll tell you what's wrong. We never set. We never set what A string is. That's all that was. Edit 130. Then go to 40. Else. A string equals I string go to 135. I bet it works now. Num. Zero, num, blank, blank. Don't know how to num. Inventory. Sorry, I don't know how to inventory. It never prints A string. At no point has it printed A string. It's not. I 
I thought I got it there. I really thought I got it. Okay, um... Sorry, I don't know how to inventory t-shirt. <laughs> I love it. Why is this not working? I, I genuinely don't get it. So what we got up here is, uh, right, if n equals 0, then go to 140. Oh, good grief, I've put it in the wrong place, that's why. <laughs> if n equals 0, then we're skipping the bit that I wanted to do. A string equals I string. Go to 140 else A string. Why don't I just do it? Why don't I just... Why don't I just take this bit out? When it says print end string, why don't I just do this? A string equals I string. It doesn't matter that we're going to over, overwrite it later because it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So set it there. If N equals naught, then go to 140, else go to 135, and then this should work. Inventory. Inventory, inventory. Sorry, I don't know how to do inventory, but now we've got it. Now it's there. It's typed it. It's typed it. Num, num, inventory. So we are so close. We are so close. Oh, oh. I don't like this. I don't like this one bit. Because it should have worked. We had it. I can see why. Can you guys see why this doesn't work? I can. A string. That's the A, a string there. The, f the, the first time inventory is uh, uh, repeated. That should be in uppercase. Edit. 130. A string equals upper string. I string. Inventory. You are carrying nothing. Bum face. Character things. And there we go. That's all we needed. We're getting intermittent stream dropouts. Uh, drop frame zero. Everything looks fine on my side. Let me just uh, jump into the background with uh, YouTube. Into the back scenes. And um, recently closed live streaming. You're not getting intermittent drops, Patrick. Excellent. Let's have a quick look at what's behind here on the back side of this. Uh, excellent connection. Stream health. Let's check on stream health. Stream is healthy. Um, I It looks like it might be your end there, James. Sorry. Let's go back to this. So we've got it to work. And that's all it was. We, we hadn't typed uh, that we needed it in uppercase. Which case it may be my own. Fair enough. Oops, wrong bit. But we've got one other issue. What if we type in three things? We don't want three things, do we? So, one hundred line one hundred thirty-six. N percent equals insta one B string. Right, we're finding if there are any spaces in B string. Wouldn't it be easier to convert to uppercase immediately once strings are in entered? Yes. Yes, it would. But I didn't do that. <laughs> it would have been much easier, but I didn't do that. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> P string equals. Oh, left string of B string N minus one. One three seven print B string. Right, run this. I want to do check. Num num. 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 
There we are. So it now cuts off a second space. So if we type get down and boogie, it will only attempt to get down. It won't look at anything after a second space, which is what we want. We only want two things. Nom, nom, nom. There we are. List. So, yes, we've got it to work now, and it doesn't... We could have uh, saved a lot of space, actually. CLS, list, 120 to 250. Right, 126. 126, I string. Actually, I don't want to change it. it it's fine how it is. It's fine. Uh, 137, just delete. 120 to, 100, to 250. Gone. There we are. Excellent. Right. So now we only get uh, the, the bits that we need. So we can go north, south, east, west, up, down, and inventory. Let's start coding those, and then we'll come back and code anything else we need. So 300 is uh, mark north. Actually, movement code. So 300. Right. We need to know whether we can go north. Yes. 310. If, and this is um, exit n, percent, of the, 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 if exit n percent of what is it our location is that what we called it yes location percentage so what that is is percent location percentage is our location so the num the room number that we're in exit n percent and then in brackets location percent is the array that stores all of the destinations. If exit n location n equals is great sorry is greater than one no equals zero then print you cannot go north. Three hundred twenty. Location percentage. Edit three hundred twenty. Edit three hundred ten. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. If exit. That, that's the idea. Sophisticated movement. The idea is that this is a game engine and we can just set where we're jumping to. 320. Let's edit that. Let's edit that again. Edit 320. Edit 310. Else go to 320. 315. Go to 120. That's the jump back. Many, many years ago, I tried to write a text adventure engine in QBasic. The directions were strictly grid-based. I tr I loved QBasic. That was a very advanced version of BASIC. I also tried, what was it, GBasic? That was pretty good as well. Right. 320. Location percentage equals exit N percentage. Location percentage. go to and then we're going to need something new 700 go to 700 700 remark look command we're going to need that <laughs> was for a rather silly game about biscuits if I recall correctly. see no people grow older but we don't change <laughs> okay let's try running this North. You cannot go north. You cannot go north. Inventory. There we are. CLS list. 120 to 250. 
Edit 150. If a string equals inventory or a string equals i or a string equals inv, because I've done that one before, go to 600. Run. Inv. So we're carrying nothing. North. Can I go north? There we go. Ha <laughs> ha! We're getting somewhere now. List. Right, where are we? The the movement commands are did, 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 movement code is three hundred. CLS list three hundred to four hundred. That'll do. Right. Three hundred was it three hundred three hundred fifty? We're going to do the same thing, absolutely the same thing again, but now it's south. We cannot go south. Will this feature a group wearing an elf outfit? Why not? Else go to 370. No, 360. Let's do that. 355 go to 120. Right. 330. We don't need 360 is this because we're going to another location right north south east list 120 to 250 north south east west up down okay north south east west up down that's how we're doing hi retro rewind how you doing so we know what we're doing now right 400 is east Du, 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 du. Let's do this again. Exits. Not what we want. That's not what we want at all. List 300 to 350. So 400 is east. Let's do this. If exit east, then print. We cannot go east. We're just copying the whole thing, making sure that it all works. Go to 410. 405 is go to 120, always. 410 is this. Always that. So since it's always that, we can just do that every single time. Every single time. It can always be. List 360. It's always that. Edit. Right. 350. Where is it? So. Uh, 50. Edit 350. Else go to. 320. It's always 320. Edit. 400. Which system we program on tonight? This is Amstrad CPC. We always do go to 320. That's because it's the one that we need. List 300 to 500. So we can now delete 360. We don't need 410. We don't need. And this is going to work. This is absolutely going to work. So, east, 450 is for west. If exit west, then print, you cannot go west. Go west. Else go to 320, which works out. 455, go to 120. 500. Will be up for exit up up go to 320 505 is going to 120 and then 550 for down 
can it go down? 555, go 220. This will now work. Run. Up. Can it go up? Can it go down? East. West. North. South. There we go. It's all working. The movement code. Excuse me. <coughs> the movement code's fairly simple, but it works. What's the thing that we've saved? Save Xmas. There we go. How much code we got? We're up to 2k. I have a request next Monday. The stream. The stream run My Pet Monster. I don't know. Was there a game of My Pet Monster? I don't remember that. There doesn't appear to be. My Monster Pet is a virtual pet game. But that's... My Pet Monster. Oh! Okay, you... My Pet Monster is a short game for one player or more where you create a monster and make it your pet. Okay. Oh, you're asking for the My Pet Monster to run the stream. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that because that would require me to actually um, not be in the stream. I'm not sure we can do that. So, we've got movement working. We've got the majority of it in an engine now, actually. Uh, hmm. Yeah, we've got this. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, CLS list, 122, 250. Right, let's do this. Let's have a look. What else have we got? Inventory. Uh, so list 700. That's look. Okay. Uh, 160. Let's do this. 160. If A string equals look or A string equals L go to 700 170 if a string equals get or a string equals take go to 800 175 if a string equals drop or a string equals discard, go to 900. So we've now got get, drop, look. What else do we need? I suppose 180 if a string equals push, go to 1000. 190 if a string equals pull, go to 1100. Hundred and eighty five, no, hundred and ninety hundred and remove hundred and ninety. Hundred and eighty one that should be for pull. Hundred and eighty two. If a string equals press, go to hundred and twenty. No, I did hundred and eighty two. 1,200. We don't want it to just go back to the start of the list. Right, so we've got push, pull, press, get, drop, 183. If a string equals use, go to 1,200. There we go. So now we've got push, pull, press, use, look, get, drop. We've got a fair amount of the things that we need here. So we can actually do get and drop very easily. So let's do get uh, 800. 800 is the get command. Actually, no, we're going to do look first. List 700 to 800. Right, 710. CLS. Uh, what is it? Let's see. 800. No, not description. Uh, right. We need an extra variable, which is light on. Light on. 
right on percentage. If light on percentage equals 1, then go to 730, else go to 720. 720 will be uh, print D desk. No. If. Uh, what is it called? Uh, is lit percentage. And this is of our current location. Which which were which is um, lock percent. So checking. <laughs> Your Renzo is covered. You can barely move for computer systems and games. The only exit is west, but it is guarded by my pet monster. <laughs> How did you... Wow, you got that right. That is west. That, that That's west. That's east. Oh my... Huh. You Well, west. You try to go west, but my pet monster pounces on you and eats you. Game over. I like that. Right, so, is lit location. Our current lock percent is our current location. Whichever number we're in will set the check the is lit for that variable. If is lit percentage equals one, then go to seven hundred and thirty, which will print the other one, the, the, which will print a certain description. Else go to seven two five. The direction was only going by how I see the cupboard via your camera. Of course, oh, of course, yeah. Because that's, yeah, that that would be, it. yeah. <laughs> 725, right. Print. Um, D desk. String. For our current location. That's all we need to do. And then go to 120. 730 print L desk, which is the light description. So we've got two descriptions, one for dark, one for light. D desk block percentage. Go to 120. Right. I'm actually going to change to 125. If D desk string Lock percentage equals or D desk string lock percentage equals then print it is dark you cannot see it is dark. Cannot. No, that would be yeah. The comment was right. You cannot see. Else, print D desk string lock percent seven two six go to hundred and twenty. Right. Let's try that out. Look, it is dark. You cannot see. Whenever there is no description in D desk, which is the dark description, if we don't bother writing one, it will default to it is dark, you cannot see. How good is that? Save Xmas. <coughs> I'm actually West. You creep west while my pen monster is eating a very rare PS2 game. <gasps> We can't have that. We can't have that at all. That's very, very scrumptious. <laughs> right, guys, we've actually got a look description. That just works. It just prints whatever's there, and that's exactly what we want. Okay. <coughs> 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 
You are now in the corridor. You can see Zoe. She was very mad at you for letting my pond pet monster eat her 500 pound PS2 game. That's that would be a very rare PS2 game. Give me back Michigan Report from Hell. <laughs> Hi there. Hope you can well. What's the best way to learn basic programming? By um following some tutorials essentially. There's a lot of good stuff out there, Aero One. Hi, how you doing? Um The Amstrad programming manual, which is actually the Amstrad computer manual, is a pretty good I thought that's what Rule of Rose <laughs> No. Patrick, uh Rule of Rose didn't cost me five hundred pounds. It's currently about five hundred, six hundred pounds. Might have got even gone up to seven hundred. But I bought it years ago when it was a hundred and ninety. So I was very, very happy with that. <laughs> Michigan report from hell cost me five hundred. Uh, Arrow, uh, the best way to learn basic is to look at a tutorial. There's a lot of good online tutorials. Have a look at the uh, guide to programming in basic and the Amstrad CPC manuals for the 464, 664 and 6128. They're very, very good. Or if you want a more modern version, then there are a lot of good web tutorials out there. Just type in basic pro programming guide or guide to programming in basic, that kind of thing. And it should be all right. You learned using Input Magazine back in the day, says Retro Rewind. I've never uh, really got into Input Magazine, but I really should. So we've got that there. So what have we got now? Um, yeah, we've got a look command that just works. List 120 to 250. Let's have a look at this. What else do we need to do? Because we've, we've been going an hour and a half. And we've got a good system going here. So what else? What's on 800? Right, the get command is on 800. 800. Remark get and drop edit 800 I've put an extra thing in you learnt by uh, CPC basic by the 464 and 6128 manuals in Amstrad Action is great as well the old um, yeah the old magazines are fantastic for showing you how things work there's nothing better than just typing in a program that someone's already written and trying to work it out as you go onto what everything does works really well okay the get and drop command 810 let's have a look right let's have a look four x equals one to th to 30 815 if uh, noun string of x this is the list of nouns for the objects we've got if noun string x equals b string sorry if upper string just in case equals b string then y equals x that's the interesting bit. That's the one we want. 816, next, X. So, 817, this is the one. No, it's 820. Right. If. What's our weight? Weight limit. W limit. No. We need an extra thing. We've got a weight limit. We don't have a current weight. So, cur weight percentage if current weight percentage plus weight percentage for y is less than or equal What's the equal scheme? There it is. Less than or equal to weight limit percentage. Then go to 830, else go to 825. 825, print. You can. You cannot pick up the you cannot pick up plus B string plus with all you are K 
currently carrying. Go to 120. So that would be too heavy. 830, however, equals uh, <laughs> just picking up. <laughs> yeah. Print. You take the plus B string, and that would then put that would then allow us to change the position uh, position string of Y equals minus one. Actually, that should be eight hundred and fifty. Because we've got an extra check. We've got to make sure that it's there. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. 800, just remove that. Yeah, we don't need that. 817. If. Position. Straight. Percentage. Of. Y equals our current location then go to 820 else go to 818 818 print you do not see that here and go to 120 okay uh do, 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 list 800 to 850 yeah, okay. 840 is go to 120. Thanks the heads up, says Aero. Uh, much appreciated. I'll have to have a look online. I originally learned basic on the Acorn 100 million years ago. I think I have an old basic book somewhere. I'll look out for the CPC. It's available online. We're actually looking at a copy online from commonplace.doubleloop.net. I'm going to grab that uh, URL and put that into here. There we go. <laughs> so you can get a copy of the manual very now, very easily. One of my biggest regrets when I was a kid, I was only interested in playing games on C64. Nowadays, I'm more interested in the hardware encoding. Yeah, these happen. That happens. I wouldn't worry about it. So we've just set up the uh, a get uh, command, where it checks uh, whether the noun actually actually does it right. <laughs> I've just realised. Uh, yeah. We've missed one out. That's interesting. Edit 816. We've got a quick check. If y equals 0, then we haven't found anything. Go to... Then... If y equals 0, then go to 818. Else, go to 817. Yeah, you do not see that. So, if we type in something that isn't around, then... We'll have a check and it'll say you don't see that here. If we typed in something and it does exist in the list of nouns, but it's not in the same room as us, then it'll say you don't see that here. If it is in the same room as us, but it's too heavy with our, all of our current weight and it goes over our weight limit, then it'll say we can't pick it up with all we're currently carrying. But if any of that is not true and we actually can pick it up, it'll say you take the blank. And then it'll change the position of that to minus one. Minus one position is our inventory. Hi, Colin. How you doing? I'm glad you. I'm glad you're finding it useful, Arrow. That's a lot of what we want to do here on the channel: is make games interesting and uh, make uh, make programming more accessible. Because we have a lot of fun with this. So we've got a get command that works now. Hopefully, we'll find out if it does <laughs> when we put some stuff in here. So save Xmas at this moment. We're saving Christmas. Yay! <laughs> we need a drop command. Pretty much the same thing. Thank you. I'm hoping to link. Excellent. Why am I doing... CLS list 120 to 250 so we can see what we're doing. What is the drop command? Where, where's the number? That is 900. Okay, 900. Actually... List 800 to 900. We could go from 850 for the drop command. Oh, that would work. Yeah, let's do, let's do that. List 120 to 100 to 200. Let's do, uh, where's our drop command? 
edit 175. Oh, edit 175. So we're going instead of 900, we're going to go to 850. List 850 to 1,000. I don't know. List 800 to 1,000. No. List 800 to 1,000. Not to 100. You can't go backwards. You have to go forwards. 850. Right. Here we go. If for x equals 1 to, let's say, 30. Doesn't really matter. 855. If upper string ding, 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 noun string of x equals b string then y equals x right 851 y equals 0 otherwise it'll only work once edit 810. Y equals zero. Won't work otherwise. Take care, Iron Horse. Thanks for coming along. Have a great night. Thanks for being my background noise this evening. <laughs> Hope you managed to figure out the rest of the strings. Thank you. And uh, I'm glad. I'm glad you have enjoyed it. Right, let's have a look at this. Uh, 851 Y equals not. We can get rid of that. 851 go. Edit 850. Y equals zero. For x equals 1 to 30, let's have a look at 850 to 1000 again. Right, if upper string, noun string, x equals b string, then y equals x. Okay, let's do this. Um, yeah, 860. Next, x. If y equals 0, then print, you are not carrying that. If y equals 0, then, then uh, go to 865, else go to 870. 865, print, you are not carrying that. Go to 120. 870, however, right. If position percentage of y, so we know which one it is, not we're looking for in our list, position y equals minus 1, then go to 880, else go to 875. 875 is, print, you are not carrying that. Go to 120. 880, print, you drop plus, where's the plus key? Uh, B string. And then position, percentage, of Y equals our current location. And that's all we need to do. Go to 120. I might not always be chat active, but I'm usually about. <laughs> Thanks, Iron Horse. Edit 880 again. Let's put in a little bit of extra. A little bit of extra pizzazz by adding to the end a full stop. There we go. List 800 to 900. Da -da 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 -da. We take that, right, edit, 830. We can add a little bit of pizzazz to that one as well by putting a full stop at the end. There we are. Save Xmas. So we've now got it so that it works, I hope. <laughs> List 850 to 900 so we can see the drop mechanic. Right, what have we got? We're checking for uh, whether the thing is... The, first of all, we're checking whether the noun we've typed is in our list of nouns. And if it is, if it isn't, then it will just print out a blank error message of you are not carrying that. If. Oh, we don't need that. Remove 865. We don't need it. 865. Take that away. Edit 
860. We don't need it twice. Go to 875 because we don't have that. So we're checking whether it's in our list of nouns. If it isn't, it will say you are not carrying that and then it'll go back to the game loop. If it is, we check that uh, its position is, a, is uh, set as minus one. If it is, that means that it's in our inventory. And uh, if it's not, we say you're not carrying that and we go back to the main game loop. But if it is, we drop it, tell the player that we've dropped it, and then we change its position to our current location. There we are. So it will then be in the room. Da -da 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 -da. Right. We now need an update. What's wrong, Patrick? We now need an update to the look mechanic. Because I've just realised we never say if there's anything in the room. So let's do that. Where's the look code? Look command is 700. So clear screen, list 700 to 800. All we do is print the description. Right. However, if we do have a light description we can see, then we can change 730. 730, print, L desk, string for the current location. And then we need to set something else up. 740. Y equals 0. For X equals 1 to 30, which is what we need to check all of our locations. We can change it later. We haven't got a huge amount of locations, but we're not going to set a huge amount on this. For X equals 1 to 30. If position percentage of x equals location, our location, then y equals 1. Next, x. 745. If y equals 1, then go to 750. Else, go to 120. 750. Print. Let's see how we can do this. Right. A, let's see. Um, D string equals. Right. 4. X equals 1 to 30 again. D string equals for X is one to thirty. If noun if position No, we've got this wrong. What am I, what am I doing this twice for? Edit seven hundred and forty. Edit seven hundred and forty. Right. For X equals one to thirty. If position X equals location then y equals 1. y equals 1. Uh, d string equals d string plus noun string x plus comma space. Else, y equals y. That's all we need. 7, 4, 1, next x. That should work. That should work. Edit 740. I've just managed to make that go wrong. Else, y equals 1. Du, 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 y equals y. List 700 to 800 so we can get back to what we're doing. Da, 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 da. If y equals 1, then go to 750, else go to 120. 750 is print. You can also see plus d string. 
few days ago in a post about a character in one of the Doctor Who specials in a Doctor Who group on Facebook, over a dozen people posted obvious transphobic comments, reported all those transphobic comments, and one by one, Facebook have said they haven't removed the comments as they don't violate any rules. Yep, yeah, that's Facebook for you. Facebook does not care about trans people. It's one of the reasons why I hardly use it outside of telling people that the shows are on, because it's a cesspit. It's the same as Twitter. They're cesspits. They actively uh, engage with transphobes because transphobes talk a lot on social media and that gets ad revenue. you that's how it is right you can also see blah 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 760 go to 120 there we go right that the look command should now work Xmas. ready okay Du, 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 du. Run. What now? Uh, look. It's dark, you cannot see. Get boom. Improper argument 136. Edit 136. Let's have a look at that. Okay. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with. What's wrong with that? That was perfectly fine before. List 120 to 150. What's wrong with. What's gone wrong? Improper argument in one three six. I don't see a problem. End string equals insta one B string blah blah blah. Uh, base string equals left string. Oh, yeah, I've got it. Okay, I see what's wrong. Edit one three six. Um, if n string equals zero, then go to hundred and forty. Else, there. There we are. That should work. Get boom. Fifteen <laughs> edited. Right, we're getting somewhere now. Stop the string now and string x equals b string. Then y equals x. What's wrong with that? Subscript out. Oh, because it's gone too far. Yeah, because uh, there's nothing there. Okay, that's fine. Okay, the get the get thing won't work until we've got stuff in our thing regics in our. Um, in our array, but we don't have an array yet. So we, I think we've got the majority of what we need now. List one hundred and twenty to two hundred. Um, yeah, north, south, east, west, up and down. Inventory, they all work. The look command works. Get and drop should work. Push, pull, press, and use will add uh, next time. We've got the basis of the game, so we can go on for coding. The last bit of the mechanics next week. And then we can actually get into putting together some very interesting stuff. Uh, actually, let's add a give command. 190 if a string equals give. Go to 1400. You never know, we might need a give command. And 200 if a string equals say i don't know if we'll need it but a say command 1500 there we go so give say you know what we haven't got an examine command 210 if a string equals examine or a string equals exam or a string equals read. Go to 1600. Let's put that in. 1600. Remark. Examine. Grand. Let's just put that in. 1610. 4. No, sorry. Y equals 0. 4x equals 1 to 30. If uh, 
du, 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 if upper string noun string on x equals b string because that's the command that we're looking at so we say examine paper and then we're looking for a noun that says that is equal to paper then y equals one Error one says, sorry to sound political, but speaking as a mixed race person, I think the mainstream media, politicians, corporations, etc. use minority groups for their political gain. They're creating divisions. I don't think they use them for that. Uh, as, a reform, as a retired politician myself, I don't think they do. A lot of people take advantage of the divisions that people create, but the government itself usually doesn't. It doesn't, uh, doesn't instigate it. It individual politicians may well take advantage of an existing thing that society causes and uh, that that's a problem uh, some governments uh, have people in power that do but not always and it's a big issue um, there's a lot of people who will take advantage but on a government by government basis the majority don't because they they genuinely don't care what you look like who you are or whatever what they care about is if you're going to vote for them at the next election and how much tax revenue they can get from you. That's generally what uh, com uh, governments go for, not uh, creating divisions. Just can I get some cash out of this person? Will they vote for me? That's that's what they're all interested in. The <laughs> As bad as it sounds, having been in politics, most of us come into it wanting to change things for the better. But once you're inside, you see that the main goal at every single stage is, will this get me elected again so that I can continue doing what I need to do? And if the answer's no, that's the end of it. That's that's literally the driving thing. Can, can I get tax revenue out of these people? Will they vote for me? The rest, it's just window dressing. Other people might uh, take stuff from that. Yeah, let's see how it is. Uh, right. This is why politicians do have much need to have much, much less power. Yes, the majority of stuff that a politician can do. Oh, my goodness, the stuff that politicians can do, like planning legislation. Why? Why do what? Here's the thing. When I was in uh, office, I sat on the planning committee and we would get loads of stuff through every single uh, week. Right, so uh, this person would like to ex put an extension on their house. This person would like to uh, build 500 houses. But because we have restrictions uh, in place so that if you go for a certain amount of houses that you build, you have to add, so add to the uh, area's facilities, they're only going to be building 100 of those houses. It's like, why? Why is that restriction there? We need those 500 houses. Let them build 500 houses. If it's not working out, so and it obviously isn't, where um, they're not putting enough houses in to ever trigger the need to add to the local facilities, then don't have that or have a pool of cash that every time someone builds uh, a house, they put a certain percentage into a, uh, a pot. And then once that uh, pot is reached uh, a certain level, we build a facility like a school, a doctor's surgery, a dentist or whatever then do it that way instead. That would be pretty good because then you don't have the problem of we need 500 houses, but if I build 101, then you'll charge me uh, for building a surgery, but then I'll only build 100. Don't do that. Don't do it because you are you need those 500 houses. They don't need your money uh, from selling houses as much as you need them to build those houses. So don't dis de incentivize that's my view. <laughs> right, let's finish this off. So we're looking at the exam command. Right, if upper nouns be then y equals 1. 1, 6, 2, d, 0, next, x. If y equals... If y equals 1. If y greater than zero, let's put that way instead. Y greater than zero. P 
print. What's the description? Uh, yeah, disk string y. Print disk string y else. Go to one two zero. And print west desk string y. One six three zero go to one hundred and twenty. Edit one six one zero. Right. If uh, upper noun equals b, then y equals x. There we go. Edit one six two zero. If y equals not greater than zero, print description y. Else print. You cannot see that. We can't do that. One six two. We, that's too soon. One six two zero. Next x. If y is greater than zero, then uh, if y is greater than zero, go to uh, one six three zero. Else go to one hundred and twenty. One six three zero if uh, position percentage of y equals minus one or position we forgot to check whether the thing is here you can't examine something that's not there equals location yes then go to one six four zero Else go to one six five zero. One six four zero print description. Yes, yes. Print description Y. Go to one hundred and twenty. One six five zero print. You cannot see that. Go to one hundred and twenty. There we are. I think that works. I think that's going to work. List 1600 to 1700. Right. Let's have a look at what we've done. Set y to 0. But x equals 1 to 30. So we're going to run through 30 things. If the uppercase version of the noun for whatever x is equals b string, which is the one we're looking for, then y equals x. Next. Then we check if y has become greater than zero, as in if we found something, go to 1630, else go to 120. No, I don't want to do that. 1620 shouldn't go to 120. It should go to 1650 so that we can say we cannot see that instead of just going back. 1650. Right. If position, if go back into politics, we need you. I was so stressed out constantly, worn out constantly, and fighting battles that I shouldn't have had to fight just to get stuff done that needed to be done, that I got worn out. The problem with politics is you have to have a certain mentality, and I thought I had it. I, wa I went in wanting to do good, but what I actually found is that you have to fight constantly from other people to do good. Not because they don't want to do good. Everyone wants to do good. That goes into politics for the most part. But because what they think of as good is different to what I might think of as good. So we had a constant fight. Like, but this is my priority. But that's my priority. And they were far more forceful and far more vicious than I was. I'm too, from my point of view, I'm too nice a person. I can't, uh, I can't deal with the kind of person who always puts their priorities before everyone else's, regardless of what the severity of the priority that the other person has. That's just how it is. So, uh, if y equal is more than zero, as in we found something, we jump to 1630. Else we go uh, to say, you cannot see that by going to 1620 and then jumping back into the uh, game loop again. So 1630 is check the position. If it's in the inventory, which is minus one, or it's in the current location, which is location, then we go to 1640, else we go to 1650. 1650 says you can't see it because it's not in your inventory, it's not in the current location. 1640 prints the description, and then it goes back to the game loop. There we are. So that's our 
uh, examination thing. We've just got that there. Save Xmas. Save Christmas. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at this. There we are. We've now done 4K of code. So uh, from the CPC's point of view, because we have 64K of RAM after everything is uh, installed from AMSDOS and uh, the uh, ROMs for everything else, like the basic processor and uh, everything that runs the computer, like the firmware, we end up with 47K free, which means we have 43K to deal with for whatever we want. There we go. So we saved. Let's check on our thing. Do we need to do anything to this? Uh, explore, eject, insert. Yeah, so that's fine. We've saved and it's actually saved it to the to the drive. So there we go. We've now got a working thing. Okay, we've gone past the end of our time really for, for tonight, but I think we've done some great stuff there. I've really enjoyed that and I hope that you have too. We've had a lot of fun and next week, we should be able to fit in the final parts of what we need to do to make uh, the set of commands that we want to work. And then we can work on our nice little bits that we want for the game itself. So I'm really, really happy with this. Like seriously happy. I think this is going to work out really nicely. I hope you do too because uh, it'll be fun to make it available to run. And uh, yeah, that's everything for tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have, remember to click that like button. Error one and everyone else who enjoys the politics, you might find that my other channel, ZJKR, uh, which I can't remember whether it's still called that in terms of YouTube. Let me just find my other channel. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Uh, because I have a political uh, thing called The Political Ring. It's a podcast that I started a while back. Uh, the Political... Why hasn't it come up? The Political Ring podcast. Wow. Oh, there it is. Right, okay. There we go. I am not at the top of the list for The Political Ring. That's very annoying. So I'm going to bring up my second channel onto here. There we go. That's my second channel. I have politics on there vlogs stand-up comedy it's a bit of a, a mishmash channel but i think you'll enjoy it because i talk a lot about the political stuff that i'm on about now i try to be very uh open to all sides of the political debate but i've got my own opinions as well and there will be a new uh political ring coming we've had uh we haven't had one for a month because i got really really ill like super flu it was so bad but uh I think you'll enjoy it. But anyway, for the moment, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have, remember to click that like button. Do subscribe and share this with your friends because uh, they they need to know a program. We need we all need to know a program. But I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to try and get through Jurassic Park 3 on LEGO Jurassic World. Until then, keep it retro and I'll see you later. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.